Uh, because different spending is smaller than it's smaller than Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. No, I don't. I, I remember the venue. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember exactly. I know it was a smaller city in Belgium. It wasn't like Brussels or something like this. Um, I remember the show. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was on our last full European tour that we did. Like, so I think that was the last year. So we decided to go with him to get something different out of the sound, uh, something maybe a less um, modern metal approach sound, because mm -hmm. we wanted to try to make the record sound a little different than a lot of the other production out there. So there's that end. Um, on the music, um, I wrote the majority of the music. Um, Most of the songs? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, music when it comes to order. music, the yeah. instruments, like, mm -hmm. like all the song structure and, and this and that, um, Vicky writes her own uh, melodies and things like this um, for all the vocal melody singing. You know, she's really good at that. And, um, she takes care of that, and we share the lyrics um, yeah. half half, pretty much. Uh, but Paco, the other guitar player, wrote two of the songs on the record as well. He usually writes a couple. One or two for each record, at least. So, kind of, but it's not a concept album. I like, you know, it's not yeah. like all around one theme. Mm -hmm. But the theme that connects it is that it's a, it's a collection of short stories, yeah. Yeah. and it kind of it does go in a sequence in dynamics, mm -hmm. and you can connect them. It's not so literal, not like as if it's. Chapter one, chapter two, and, yeah. but you can yeah, feel yeah. like the progression of how the music elevates and drops with the vocals and the lyrics and things, and it's uh, so the order is very important. Right. Yeah, I think we change with with each other kind of thing. Mm -hmm. On the last album, she came into The Agonist and was very concerned about like keeping The, the Agonist The yeah. Agonist because mm -hmm. she's brand new and this and that. And then after now, it's been some time, she's gotten a lot more comfortable. You know, we've all gotten more comfortable with each other musically and everything. And so now we went a little more deeper in a different direction on this, this album because yeah. we felt able to now explore a lot of these kind of uh, sounds and songs that you've wanted to do for a while, but mm -hmm. it felt like risky. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And how did the fans react to the new singer? I, I think it's mostly positive. There's mm -hmm. always going to be any band, you know, yeah. that uh, goes singer switch, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, mm -hmm. uh, Sepultura, like whatever. There's always people that will just, no matter what, even if they like it, they're not gonna like it out of like yeah. principle. So yeah, yeah. you can't please everybody. We, we have to just keep making music that we enjoy, and that's what we did. Yeah. Okay. We we had a four album contract with Century Media, so we finished that, and then we went shopping. Basically, we knew. We had a new record, so our management spoke with a couple labels, and then a poem offer just seemed like the best fit. And it's kind of what happened. It's kind of a simple answer, I guess. <laughs> really, it's hard for anyone to, to say, you know, I think it changes with time. It's like, yeah, while we were recording, I had ones that were my favorites, and you know, it changes as you listen more or whatever. I think it's like Prince like and you have to say what uh, you do like the most, but that's not possible, I think. Yeah. Every song has its own... Yeah. Or like, who's your favorite band? It's like, I don't have one, even if I have ones that I really like. Okay. Devin Townsend, like, 
I love him, but I can't say he's my favorite. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Is this also influencing your kind, your kind of music? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think he's uh, a genius, and yeah. uh, I hope to only get a, a fraction of what he can, you know, do with his songwriting. Um, there's an artist named Gustavo Salvez from South America. He's done a lot of um, album artworks for Napalm already, so Napalm recommended him. As we found a couple other artists, but then we looked at his, and it was just like we really felt like he was the best of our options, and we we're really happy with you know how it came out. Maybe the best one who uh, with, with the kind of, of, of uh, making making the art that that uh, suits the band. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's like we saw his portfolio, yeah. and then we saw others, and his just really seemed to suit more what we were going for. So we went with him. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of loud music and a lot of headbanging. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're just we're gonna play a lot of songs from all our albums, pretty much. Is, is it There's uh, a song from every album in the set. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. It's five albums. So. Uh, you gotta choose wisely and, yeah. and whatnot. And, at least we're headlining tonight, it's a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. yeah. On a support slot or a festival, it's really hard. You only know, have like 30 minutes. Yeah. Five albums, 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Quebec, where we're from, mm -hmm. um, outside the city, about uh, an hour and a half drive. Um, it was an abandoned uh, military station. Uh, it used to be a, a military radio station for the Canadian capital. But it's been uh, basically taken down like a long time ago. They took all the equipment out of there. And then a lot of people have gone in there since. And, uh, like graffitiated or, or you know whatever skating and skate park skateboard stuff. So it's kind of like it's cool about the place right now. Uh, Chris Kell is our bass player. He's also a video director. He directed that video. He directed the moment. He directed My Witness. He directed, uh, and he directs many other fans' videos when he's not playing. So it's like his job. Yeah. yeah. So. He found that location because he's always scouting for yeah. these locations. It's very, very cool place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it, uh, uh, we got to use in the building the same place? Yes, the images in the building itself are all in the same it's place. All and uh, we got a, 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 a drone for that, so it's really cool for aerial shots. Yeah. going in the right direction, slowly. Um, I think streaming is the only future music can have. Outside of, I think the collector stuff will just remain for those that are into it. You know, vinyls and even CDs, like, for purely for the collectors. I don't think the person that wants that. So I think that will stay as like a special edition sort of feeling for the collectors. But in terms of just the general revenue and everything, streaming is the future, I think, and it's year by year, they start paying out more and more It's hard, so they have to just keep that scale going up and up and up. If that keeps rising, at a certain point, it'll reach a point that's acceptable, you know. Yeah. Uh, 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 any artist uh, wants you to maybe survive, uh, probably will never uh, be like the 80s, uh, uh, where uh, you're uh, living in mansions, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, 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 but, I feel totally happy to just have my own well, small place to live. Well, you know, eight ideas well, well, it's all Is it also the same with uh, the music you make on the video clip to YouTube? Yeah. And you have to, you can show it to everybody, but yeah, I think that, that you, you have to see it positive because that's the way people can learn about the animals.
Yeah. But yeah. now it's everyone can have good stuff out there for millions of people. So well, that's good. Yeah. But they have, also there's so much. Like it's like there's thousands and thousands of bands out yeah. there all competing for space now. And everyone has a voice because I'm going to get you too. So it kind of like waters it down. So it's harder to stand out. So even though you have the opportunity to. Uh, good and bad. Yeah. I do one thing I don't like about YouTube. Like, there's always been music videos, like MTV and all that. But it wasn't as, like, as mandatory. Now it's like, no one can just listen to a song. They have to watch a video. Yeah. You have to have a video, otherwise no one cares. And it's like, it's kind of weird that people can't just be like, oh, I just want to hear the new song because I'm excited for the new song. I hope that you know more people can come around to to that. That's why, like, you know, streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music and stuff. I think I think it's a lot better because they don't have the visual distraction and they can just focus on the music only. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, it's, it has both sides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the moment. Get out there and check out Five. I don't care, you know, I'd like you to buy it, but if you want to download it first, it's like how the world we live in, you know. But just get out there and listen to it. Listen to the album. No, if, like I say to our fans, like, get out and listen to the album. Don't just listen to the music video. Because the album is a very large piece that Vicky and I and the guys put together and it's meant to be taken as a record, yes. not as just two or three songs or whatever, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm.